Good afternoon, everybody. Mr. Rosser here, and today we are going to get started in 3DS Max by building some simple objects using what are called standard primitives. So when you first open 3DS Max, this is the screen you should be seeing. You should uh, have your toolbars up at the top. You should have your standard primitives on the side here, and your view will look like this when you first open it. So what we want to do is we want to change the view so that we get a larger view of this bottom right screen because you have to remember we're working in a 3D environment. So what these four panels do is allow you to see four different sides of what you're working on at the same time which can come in really handy on some projects but right now for what we're doing it's much easier to be able to see a full screen of the project so we're gonna zoom in on this bottom right quadrant here there's two ways you could do that you go to this plus button down here where you see there's a plus button says pers perspective standard default shading select that plus button and go down to uh, where it says the very top line maximize screen uh, maximize viewport select maximize viewport and boom it makes your that viewport uh, fill your whole screen which is what you want there's a quicker way to do that if you go down to the bottom right corner inside 3ds you can see this uh, little box with an arrow uh, pointing diagonally up to the right if you select that that will quickly zoom you in and out of any viewport you select so you just click on and off of that and that will get you in and out very quickly but we want to be in that bottom right quadrant and so I want to show you first some of the tools you're going to be needing for what you're going to be doing today uh, you were given in Google Classroom a choice of two different uh, sets of objects that you could create you pick the two that you want to do you could either create the pencil and the stove or you could create the barbell and the window. So I want to show you some basic things you need to know to be able to create those objects. So going across the top line here, starting at the left side, uh, you have your undo button. You're going to need that. You click on that uh, just like you did in Pencil 2D. If you remember when we worked in that, when, uh, when you need to undo something, you make a mistake, you want to step backwards, just hit that undo button. You could also hit Control Z uh, for a shortcut key. There's also redo. You're going to also need to know this tool, this rectangle tool, kind of uh, getting towards the middle of the screen. Uh, it's the rectangular selection region. You're going to need that tool. You're also going to need the select and move tool, which is this cross looking object on the toolbar. You're also going to need to know this one here. It's that box, blue box, but it has like a little gray box in the left bottom corner. That's the select and uniform scale. You're going to want that select and uniform scale. And then when you come down here to the right side of the screen, we have the different kind of objects you can use to work with. And uh, if you notice, this is called the, the first panel, the plus button. This is the create panel. You're going to need that one. And if you go one more over to this little one that's like a box with almost looks like a rainbow or something in it, that's a, it says modify. And you click on that tab. You're going to need these two tabs. You're going to want the standard primitives and you're going to want to have access to the modifier list. So those are the two lists of the, the tools that you're going to need to complete this project. So right now, let's go ahead and get started on creating something. So let me show you uh, some basic things you're going to need to know. So when you're in the standard primitives, if you go down, you'll see all these different shapes you have. Uh, you can create a box. Now let's select that box. The way you do this is you go over to your grid, hold down the left mouse button, move the mouse around to the size you want the base of that cube to be, and then when I let go of the left mouse button and I move my mouse, you'll see the cube now moves up. And then I click it again where I want it to stop. So I can make it as tall or as short as I want it to be and click it again and there's my cube. See now I can move my cursor around freely. So you have the cube, 
you have the sphere, you have a cylinder, it works in the same, these all work in the same principle as the cube where you click the left mouse button, select the object, this is a torus, and, um, and then let go of the button when you have it where you want it, and then the height is adjusted until you click the left mouse button again. There's also a pyramid. This is kind of cool because it lays the base and then it the pyramid point moves up or down until I click the left mouse button. There's also a cone which works very similar to the pyramid. You get the height as you uh, move up and then you get the uh, cone shape once you let go of that left mouse button and you can make that cone shape go reverse so it so the tip is down at the bottom or you can pull down and you can get the tip up at the top there's the geosphere which is just has a little it's a little bit different than the sphere we'll get into that later that you have a tube it's kind of cool you can see the hollow center there you have a plane in other words just a flat surface so if I want my objects to sit on something I can use that plane that'll come in real handy especially later on and then there's text plus which will let you add text to objects and to designs that you're creating so I'm gonna clear these out I'm just gonna undo a bunch of times and let's just focus on for now see if I select the select and move tool the cross tool up here it'll let me select the various objects I'm gonna delete the rest of them here and let's let me draw a new box so I now have a new box so let's now try using the modify tab the reason the modify tab is here is because it lets you adjust certain things about the objects that you create so now I've finished creating this cube what I want to do let's say I want to adjust the length well if I go down from the modify tab you'll see where there's a list of different selections to choose from you have length width height uh, length segments width segments and height segments well if I want to adjust the length I can either type in a number or I can just use this arrow key push the left mouse button, uh, button down and pull up and you see I'm adjusting the length of my cube so I can make it flat I can make it wide I can do the same thing with the width and I can do the same thing with the height now if you go down to the length segment tools you'll notice when you pull up and down on on that on those numbers like I'm increasing it I'm let's say I increase the length let's increase the length segments to eight well you notice nothing happened and the reason why is because you need to change your view of the cube so if you go up here to where you have the plus button again the perspective standard default shading select this default shading this is giving you just a default view of your cube and you'll notice when you select different uh, one of these items here like the bounding box flat color hidden line clay you can get a different look at your objects like if I say clay it gives it actually more of a clay look not so much on the cube but on some of the other objects it'll really show up or you could go down here select stylize and I could say like graphite and it'll change the entire look of the picture a lot of people like to work with kind of an animated uh, looking background so you could change that but if you go down to wireframe override it will show you a wireframe view of the cube but let's go down let's go back to default shading and then let's go to where it says edged faces select edged faces you'll notice now you can see these eight lines right here the reason for that is those are the eight segments I just added when I said length segments so let me bring that back down to one and you'll see now it's just the cube looks the way it did in the beginning just make sure you're into edged faces and then when I add two it divides it the cube into two segments and if I add three it divides it into three segments four and so on and you could divide it in different directions now we don't need that today but later on that'll come in really handy when you want to adjust just one segment of a cube or an, a shape you're working on so let's bring that all back down to one 
Another important thing you're going to need to know as you begin creating these different objects, whether it be the pencil, the barbell, uh, whatever it is that you go create, you're going to need to know how to copy. Copying in 3ds Max, copying an object is really simple. All you have to do is, first of all, select the Select and Move tool. Make sure you have that selected, the, the cross with the arrows on the ends up at the top. And remember, you're in a 3D environment, so you have a X, Y, and Z axis. What that means is, if I select the Y axis, I'm going to slide my cube along the Y plane. If I select the X axis, I'm going to move the cube on the X axis. And then if I select Z, I'm going to move the cube vertically up and down. So Y, y and X will move it horizontally, where Z will move it uh, vertically. The other thing to remember is you can zoom in and out of your picture of what you're working on by using the roller on your mouse. If you select the roller on your mouse and just roll in and out, you can move around your screen. Another thing you could do is go down to the bottom right of your screen. You'll see where there's a hand and when you hold the cursor over it, it says pan view. When you select that, you can move your uh, everything, your entire scene, anywhere you need it. Believe me, you're going to really find this handy later because a lot of times objects will kind of get lost in your scene and so it becomes real easy to just bring them back to the center of your screen. So you want to have the Select and Move tool selected because we're going to copy this cube. So let me zoom out just a little bit and I want to move over just a little bit so it's a little off center there. Okay, so we're going to make a copy of this cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top. Let's make sure that you have the Select and Move tool selected and that the cube is selected. Then it's really simple. All you do is hold down the Shift button on your keyboard and select one of the arrows for the direction you want to make your copy. In other words, uh, you could select the Y axis, the X axis, or the Z axis, and I'm going to select the Y axis. Hold down the Shift button, hold down your left mouse button, and just slide it over. And there you go. Very simple. So it made a copy, but now I'm given a choice of I can either just select a copy, which will mean just an individual copy of the first object, and I can do whatever I want with that second object and first object, and it won't affect the other. On the other hand, if I select Instance, and I'm just going to go ahead and say OK, now what will happen is I'm going to select the original object, and I'm going to change the width. You'll notice the width on the second object changes too. If I select Height, the height on the second object changes as well. Now that comes in real handy if you're building something that you need lots of identical shapes. If I needed a box to be manipulated um, several times over, it saves me a lot of time than having to keep copy and pasting or get each one perfect. I can manipulate them all at once. But let's go back. Let's make individual copies of this one. So I'm going to select the object. I'm going to select the shift key, I'm going to slide that cube over, and there we go. I'm just going to say copy because I don't want them to, to do exactly however I adjust one. I don't want the other to do the same thing. Now another thing I can do is I can group them together. So let's, let's build something here real quick. Let's build something really simple. Let me get one more box. I'm going to Build, I'm going to make this one about kind of long and flat. So I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to select the Move tool. I'm going to move that up on top of these two boxes. So it's kind of like a, a desk or something. See, I can change the... One of the things you always want to do in a 3D environment is you want to look at your object from all the directions. Because did you notice how when I first built this, it looked like, oh, that's fine. It's, it's right on top of those two boxes. But as soon as I move it, no, it's not. It's floating in the air. That's because you're working in a 3D environment, which is nothing like in 2D. So... In, in 2D, you don't have to worry about that, but in 3D, you have to make sure that all your objects are connected. So I'm going to bring that down, and then I'm going to 
grab this cube. By the way, you notice the way you change your viewpoint is by grabbing this cube on the right side of your screen and moving around your screen. There you go. So I've got this desk type shape. It shows you where you're looking when you look at that cube. Like it says I'm looking at the left side. I'll say the top. So we're going to group this together because every time I'm going to do something with this desk, I have to move every part individually. We want to be able to move the desk all together. So you do that by grouping. And the way you do that is you can select at the top of the screen this rectangular selection region. Just select all the objects that you want to be in the group, which are all three that are on the screen in my case. And then what you're going to do is go to the top toolbar and go one, two, three, four over where it says group. I'm going to select group. It gives me a little drop down window. I'm going to select that where it says group. It's going to ask me for a name. I'm going to call it desk. Say OK. And now, if you notice when I select it, it selects the entire desk. This is really nice because now I can move the desk around. If I need to add things to it, I can. But what happens if, if you make a mistake or you need to, you need to undo this group? Like, I, I, like let's say I discovered the uh, cube on the right is not the right shape. Then what I could do is select the desk, select this group. I go back to the top line where it says group. And I'm going to say open. And what open does is it now opens my group so I can make adjustments to it. The cool thing is it pretty much keeps it all together. It just it just opens it so I can make my adjustment. I'm going to slide that in a little bit. And then you can go back and you just say close. So it's just open to make the adjustment and then close. And now I have my desk group again. So something else you're going to need to know how to do is how to use the scale tool. So let me go ahead and uh, let me delete my desk here, even though I know it's truly beautiful. And let's go ahead and uh, let's make another box. I'm going to draw my box here. So there's my box. So now let's say I want to change the scale of it. Well, there's a couple ways I could do that. Uh, the first way is the one we already talked about. If I go over to my Modify tab on the right side of the screen, I could adjust the length and the width and the height. Or another way I can do this is I can go to the top of the screen and I could select the Select and Uniform Scale tool. And now this will allow me to adjust the the scale of various parts of the object or adjust the size, the scale of the entire object, depending on where I cl click on this triangle. If you notice, when I click in the center of the triangle, the middle part of the triangle lights up. If I go to the outside of the triangle, just one side of the triangle lights up, one side of the outer portion of the triangle. Well, that's because if I want to adjust the entire object, I click on the center part of the scale tool and I just hold my left mouse button down and I move my object up and down and now you can see I can change the scale I can make it smaller I can make it larger whatever I want to do on the other hand let's say I just want to adjust the scale of it on one side going one direction well I can select an outer portion of the triangle like I'm gonna select this this bottom outer part of the triangle hold my left mouse button down and you notice the scale going along the horizontal axis changes. On the other hand, if I were to take the top one, it would change the vertical axis. So it changes according to where you pick on the scale. So another thing I want to show you is now let's go back to the objects and this time Let's select, uh, let's select a cylinder. Draw my base. Draw the lines up. You can see it's showing the edged faces there. I have edged faces selected and so it's already divided into different segments. Remember I can change that by going into modify. You can see it says height segments 5. I could change that and make that 1. I could change the other segments how it says sides 18. I could change those however I want. 
see you'll see it it the more segments you have the smoother your object will be the less segments you have the less smooth it'll be so you'll notice on my cylinder when I brought it down to eight segments if you look all around it you'll notice it's not perfectly round anymore but on the other hand if I go back and I add I'm gonna add like I don't know 24 segments now you notice it's nice and round so that that's how you make something rounder now you don't want to use more segments than you need because the more segments you add the longer it takes to render things that we'll, we'll be getting to rendering later but it can take it a longer time if, if there's too much information so you just want to keep it to just what you need so just when it's round is plenty you don't need to bring it up to 500 or something like that at least not at this stage in the game so I have my cylinder here and let's say I want to change the way the direction that it's going like right now the cylinder is going vertical it's going up and down so let's say I want to make it horizontal well what I could do is go up here and select the select and rotate tool so I'm going to select the select and rotate and you notice it open this these circles here well I can select this inner circle you see it will move my cylinder along those lines select the outer one I can move my cylinder around there or because it's 3d I can select this blue line and I could swing it around horizontally I can also roll it by selecting the green line so those are some things you can do that will help you when you're building your objects it'll allow you to move shapes so as you look at the various objects just look at the what uh, standard primitives make those objects the window the pencil and see which direction you need to move those objects to get the shape to to build that object that you're trying to build so I think that's about all you need to know so go ahead and get started on building your objects and have fun